everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. Our next guest is Lila Lauren, who you probably know from her role as Angela on the drama Power. Now she's starring in the sci-fi drama Altered Carbon, where she plays Danica Harlan, an ambitious governor of the planet Harlan's world. Welcome, Lila. How you Hi, doing today? Thank you so much. Give it up. Great. Um, we have so much power stuff to talk about, but first we got to talk about Altered Carbon mm-hmm. because I've got to check out a couple episodes of this show, and it is so intricate and beautiful and big and it just must be so much fun it was a blast I, it was such a wonderful departure and like yeah. a new kind of world and genre to explore I had such a great time right so for those who are unfamiliar can you sort of break down this dystopian world so basically altered carbon uh, takes place several hundred years in the future and uh, we humans have figured out a way to immortalize ourselves. They can digitize our consciousness into stacks and if you have enough money, you can buy a new body and just keep re-upping that. And, and it plays out a lot of these sort of human dilemmas we have now of the 1%. Well, if the 1% can you know, keep living, it creates this sort of very, very, very striated class system. And the 1% almost sort of becomes like, almost like Greek gods because they can achieve immortality, uh, essentially. And so there's all these questions of um, what makes us human? Where, where is our identity at? What, where, what, what happens to love, uh, boredom plays a re- really huge role. Um, and there's a commodification of everything. Yeah. And uh, No, that's a beautiful way to describe it. Because um, I was like, I'll let you do it so I don't give anything away. <laughs> uh, and you play Danica Harlan. Mm-hmm. So who is she? So Danica Harlan is the new governor of Harlan's world. Her father, Conrad Harlan, had been the governor for the last 300 years. And he has strangely renounced everything, even public life, and has kind of disappeared. Uh, And so she stepped into his shoes amid all of the doubts of his old senior counsel, and she's trying to take Harlan's world in a new direction. I love this character. Uh, She's so powerful. I'm not quite sure if she's good or bad. Is that by design? Is it sort of you're trying to figure out what her real motivations are? Yeah, in the world of, yeah, there's, in the world of Altered Carbon, you know, Talk hates meths just by season one and he because he hates the privilege and the opulence. And then Danica, even though she's this governor, she's still under the thumb of the protectorate, which is this sort of larger imperialist regime. And she wants autonomy uh, for her own planet. And so it's that interesting thing of of these sort of complicated, flawed characters. Because right. she's trying to get out from under her father's shadow and very much create her own path, but like, what links will she go to to do that? Yeah. Stay tuned, we'll see. <laughs> um, I also love the first time we see her is this huge hologram. Oh yeah, that was Was that fun. cool when you finally got to see? Because obviously when you're shooting it, you're, you're not seeing yeah, what so it's gonna when be. You're, yeah, when you're shooting it, you're literally in this dome with hundreds of cameras. So you know those, jungle gym domes that used to play in as a kid, they basically, at every single apex, mounted a camera to one. And then you have to do that speech, standing very still looking at the mark and reacting as if an audience is there. Um, And then they build a a 3D hologram out of that. And then there was another scene where you see her behind the screen. So then shooting that and intersplicing the two. And those were actually done months and months apart. So that was one of the the hologram uh, speech it was the last thing I shot and then the one behind the little screen was the first so yeah. it was it was a, a cool acting talent I was gonna say I, I actually just thought it was maybe just like video I didn't know that they actually kind of created that hologram well I, yeah to, to be able to do the, the 360 yeah. thing yeah that is so cool like you know only like Whitney Houston and Tupac have holograms well no it's not like a I know <laughs> hologram. yeah I know I'm just saying it's yeah. kind of a cool it was a, when I saw it I was like that is so cool it must be cool to play it and then see what this how they created in this world yeah to see because principal photography is only a small uh, it's like a third of the rest of the work that has to be done. So when you, when you know when you when we look out and you look at the landscape of Harlan's world, we're looking at just a you know empty set. Yeah. Was that a new challenge for you? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah, because power was very realistic. This requires a lot more imagination and also imagination and you know what what is Danica afraid of if if death isn't a big fear? Like death is a huge 
fear in us now. That's sort of so much of what we do is is not looking at it. And so when it ceases to become an issue, what are you? What is one afraid of? What? Yeah. So it's a whole different set of stakes, and you're guessing at it. You know. I have to say too, her wardrobe is so fierce. I mean, she's got like these perfectly tailored suits mm-hmm. and capes. Does that sort of help you get into oh, her uh, governess? Yeah, you know, mentality. Hundred percent. Yeah, totally. The shoulder pads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, um, yes, absolutely. Her her wardrobe um, really helps imbue you with a, a sense of what is regal, yeah. and um, it's also. The designer, Cynthia Summers, is incredible and had a great vision. And we were really talking about Danica's austerity. Like, there is this grandeur mixed with uh, sort of an an austerity and a very unfettered femininity, but there was an elegance to it. And so walking that line, it was really, really fun. And to have everything built from the ground up, because it's all original, was such a cool process to also as a person watch how things get made like from the rough draft to the structure to yeah that's something I really enjoy because I I'm a person who when I put on clothes I feel that power yeah and with her how she presents herself when she's in front of her council or just I don't know her clothes to me just make me yeah really connect to the power that she wants and that she is taking on clothes have their own voice yeah. and you know and so um it was good yeah. yeah there's a lot of cool themes in this show um characters can live forever, but their bodies change, basically. Like, your consciousness can remain, but the bodies can change. So we saw that in the first season. There was a different actor playing the protagonist, Mm -hmm. Takashi Kovacs, and now we have Anthony Mackie playing the role. And I think it's so interesting to explore that idea of what makes a person a person, right? Because now we have the same consciousness in two different bodies, two different races, um, different genders even. Mm -hmm. Um, So what conversations have you guys had about like when people switch bodies and is that something you've kind of thought about more? Well, it's, yeah, it's sort of like how, what, how do you then recognize something? So much of it is someone's memories, history. Also, okay, maybe, maybe you can pass your consciousness on but then the question is what happens to your spirit amid all of this time is there a degradation uh there's an interesting parallel where where whenever cells replicate at the end of our dna sequence there's telomeres and part of dna replication requires that you cut into those telomeres over time and um telomeres are like if you the the little glue ends on your shoelaces, they kind of bind your 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 DNA strands together and or the chromosomes together. And so at the end of life, as you get older, you run out and 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 your telomeres unravel and then you unravel. And in altered carbon, it sort of brought up, well, if you replicate yourself too many times, you kind of, some people tend to go crazy. That's why some people wear what they call synthetic sleeves versus organic sleeves. And then there's a larger question, what happens to your soul? What happens to your spirit over time? If you could have another sleeve, which is just a word for body, uh, would you change yours? Like if you had that option? I mean, if I could just do it temporarily, yeah. Have you thought about what kind of sleep Someone you asked me, and I don't know why, but I keep thinking Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Please elaborate, Leela. Because he had, like, when I, when I, for, I remember as a child, like, watching all his bits and his mm-hmm. lotsies and the talent, the physical talent and what would be like. And I also just, you know, you also want to know someone's, like, dirty secrets off, you know, to know what it is like to be in their skin. Um, and then also... You know, uh, who's the the rock climber that just did free solo? I oh, forget his name. I forget his name, but he's amazing. Yeah, like I think I I tend to gravitate towards people who have skill sets that I don't have at all. You want to know mine? Yeah. Lenny tell Kravitz. Me. <gasps> oh. I just feel like being in his body for like, I don't know, however long mm-hmm. would just be really thrilling. I just think he does a lot of things right. You know, and he's got like it. the you know, he's got the hair, uh-huh. the way he walks through the world, he's so rock and roll, he's so many things. Right. And I feel like my consciousness would just have a really great time. You would be so stoked. Yeah, it would be really <laughs> great. But, but that's why I love this show. And I, I know the creator at one point talked about wanting to explore that theme more, especially for people who identify as transgender, where it's like your consciousness is your consciousness, and that can right. be separate from your body and your experience. And I just think those are really sort of fun themes to explore. Right. Well, and there's this also bit where this idea that the body you're in also has its own memories 
if you can tap into it. And that's actually true. We do have memory cells in our organs. So scientifically, our body does hold its own memories. You know how I know that? Huh. I just watched Goop Lab, and they have this whole energy healing thing, and they talked about how our scars hold memories. Mm, yeah. So as they're healing you, like certain traumas in your body yeah. like, hold these memories. There's a great book called The Body Holds the Score. Yeah. I'll check that out. Yeah. I'm fascinated by all of that. <laughs> um, and we also mentioned that in this show, the the characters can live forever. Is that something that would be appealing to you? No, right? not at all. Yeah. yeah. Like it it, it comes at a tremendous price. Yeah. And it, it's ironic because I think uh, that's what Alter Carbon e explores is these things that seem like the, the best advantage ever. And then you start to realize the real cost. Yeah, I really, that's maybe all I can say about the show without spoiling anything, because I just really, and it really transported me. Like when I was watching it, it just made me think of all these things. And I just enjoyed, like Anthony Mackie's taking on this character and what that must be like for him to be, you know, it's a new character, but it's sort of an anthology. It's just whatever you Well, really and it's need. originally, like, Tak is originally a, an Asian guy who then Joel Kinnaman takes, you know, so this is already the third iteration. Yeah. yeah. You know um, who didn't live forever? Angela <laughs> from Power. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I was laughing so hard because I went back, last time you were here, we were talking about uh, the upcoming final <laughs> season of Power. And that whole time you knew Angela was dead. And I was, How did I do? I, you did so good. I was like, so what's Angela going to do? And she has these decisions to make. And you were so good. What was that press experience like for you, knowing that this character wasn't going to be really a part of the final season? I mean... Um, I have like a personal motto, which is tell the truth and no one to lie. Um, but lying does kind of like bold face, just lying to people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> makes you feel a little uncomfortable. Um, it, it was though such a long, cause I really, I knew as soon as I got shot season five, which is six months before it even airs. So I, I, at this point I'd been living with this for like a year and a half. So I was so ready to um, have that secret, like have everybody know, because um, yeah, I was, I was, I, you know, as, as people were digesting it, but it's like I had a year and a half. I was like, catch up, everyone. Oh, I'm okay. Like a, were you like bummed when you first saw it in the script, or were you like, this makes sense? Um, I felt like it made sense, and I got really lucky where it happened at that perfect moment. I think if it happened any earlier, I would have been really heartbroken. And then also I didn't have to deal, like once the bodies start dying, like it's no more fun. I'm, it's, it's, to be the first one out, that's like, that's the best way to go. Yeah, it turned into Game of Thrones real yeah. quick in the final season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are your overall feelings about how everything wrapped up and just that chapter in your life? I mean, there's so, I would say like bottomless gratitude. I was a re I was a struggling actor. I was on the verge of having to move in with my parents. Yeah, I mean, it was rough up until that point. And so it was, it was the first time I was given a shot to, to actually have a career and you learn so much. I mean, it's like college and graduate school mashed together. Um, and to have that, also to have power become what it did. You know, we were this little show on this little, you know, stars at the same time wasn't, wasn't very well known. And, and it was really a grassroots sort of little engine that could that just sort of gain momentum. And watching that happen and being a part of that was, yeah, it just, it's one of those moments where you catch up with the dream and you get to run alongside it. And, and yeah, it's, yeah. I don't think people realize how consistent the ratings were on on Power. Yeah, they kept I mean, growing. and they kept growing every season. It really is. It made and history. And it's still in a lot of ways. strangely growing. Like people are still catching on to it. Well, that's the thing. I think when a series this known ends, then people are coming in at the end and they go back and yeah. they are discovering it. Well, and it was it's really new. word of mouth. Yeah. You know, it, and and yeah, I don't. I, it was it was just so lucky. Yeah. You said you learned a lot. Um, as an actor, what is it that maybe helped you grow the most or develop just um, your style? Yeah, so before you spend most of your time unemployed and maybe you get a guest star here or there, but like quantifiable, you might maybe acting five to 10 days a year and the rest of the time in your class, you're prepping on auditions. And so there's so many lessons that you hear your teachers say like, let it go, but you actually can't 
because it's too it means too much and so when you have the kind of workload of being a series regular like you can't have your mind in the last scene and, and that maybe beat yourself up for it because you have a whole other another one to to um to prepare for and so it keeps you very present until that kind of clicks into your body i would say the other thing is um how fast it, it's like being in finals week uh, for six months, the the level of content that you have to memorize and prepare is no joke. It washes a lot of people out, and so just um, and having then the confidence, knowing that you can handle it. Uh, and what else would I say as an actor? Um, just the I would say the endurance that it takes. You know, like that scene when Angela broke down and shat, like, when she woke up from the nap, and like met go like that was six hours of of starting over from a happy place and ending shattered. Yeah over and over and over and over again. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I can do this. Well, you can do it once. Can you do it 40 times? You know, so maybe that's an exaggeration, but at least 12. Yeah. But That's a lot. It's a lot. And so just learning that and learning that I can do that makes you feel like you belong in a way that I think is hard. Building earlier. confidence is yeah. like everything, I would imagine, yeah. especially in your profession, you know, because you want to take on more and different roles yeah. and having one that you got to And trust from. me, the insecurity <laughs> never goes away, <laughs> ever. You just get a little, you get confident in, uh, in other areas, yeah. so it helps. So then what was that time like between Power and Altered Carbon? Did you take a little break or did you I didn't, straight? it was like straight in, so yeah. And then- How close? Um, basically, I, st I started, uh, well, I, I had like, I, there was a bit of an overlap. So the reason why I couldn't cut my hair on Altered Carbon was because I still had a couple scenes when Ghost was um, seeing apparitions of Angela. So I started Altered Carbon in January in the last scene of Power of episode uh, uh, 610 was shot in March. Okay. So I had to fly back and really do that. Really got no time off. Yeah, and then I think we wrapped July first and then went straight into power press like a few days later yeah, yeah. are you gonna get a break anytime are you doing anything fun i i'm doing all, uh, right now i'm on american gods and that's starting oh right god that's enough <laughs> so yeah but it's hey you gotta make hey while the sun is shining american gods is another one of those really big like cool but it's cool, like fantasy so fantasy yeah. i find myself so confused on that show and then also like so entertained. Does it, that make sense? Like, it's always like, I don't quite know what's happening, but we're going to, I'm going to figure but it out. But I like it. And yeah, it's good. yeah. But I like it. And I think visually, it just really like, really beautiful it. show. Super fun. Yeah. Uh, well, we do have a couple of questions. Okay, great. Who do we have first? Uh, Emma? Hey. Yes, Hi. I'm Emma. Hi. Hi. Uh, just hearing you talk about going from, you know, being the struggling actor, just trying to make ends meet, and then almost having to move home to having a good paying job and going from one gig to the next, which is amazing. What do you feel like you've learned about yourself? Not just like as an actor, but like as a person, have you seen yourself in the characters that you've played or just seen total opposite? Oh, I mean, it's, you know, as an actor, you always are, you, it's always you. Uh, what what I particularly sometimes like about playing characters that are very different than how I am in, in real life is it gives yourself permission to explore these other value systems or ways of being, <laughs> you know, and you can kind of do awful things and then go and sleep at night, and that's really fun. Like, killing people yeah, like is shooting so people. much fun. <laughs> um, and you get to wake up and, like, eat your toast and still be a right. A good human um, and I think it conf it also makes you look at your own judgments you know because you can't judge the character that you're playing so you have to get curious about it and so that's that's sort of an, an I think I've gotten less judgmental and more like Meh, like as I've been an actor because you understand humanity better uh, and what I've also learned is that whenever you you know, uh, get to another level or a new level, you're a beginner again and you're graceless for a while. There was a lot of, you're clumsy and you freak out and you don't have any tools yet. It's like you, you finally got into where you, you want to get, but it's like terrifying at the same time. And it takes a while to find your footing and just to have patience and compassion for yourself that you will learn, but you'll make a lot of mistakes along the way. You know, whenever you're in a new, there's like situations you didn't know existed till you're in them. So yeah, that was part of it. 
you shoot for the moon, but you don't know what the dark side of the moon looks like until you get there. Yeah. And I think people always want progress, but they don't know all the BS that's inextricably wedded with it, and that's just part of it. But as you go, then you learn how to handle it, and then it gets easier. But in the beginning, whew. Yeah. yeah. Did you feel like that when you first walked into Danica and just so, sort of how different she was? Um you know that well that was it was a really quick turnaround to prepare so like I had a little more time to sink into Angela and develop a character so the scary thing with Danica was I had to really rely on my instincts and do it really fast and she's very stylized so it's not she's not entirely naturalistic so that was felt like a big risk uh and we'll still see how that pays off um and then like yeah going to Vancouver a lot of that stuff is 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 more like outside acting stuff like how do you find your bearings in a city that you don't know without a car and your truck, like all that, you know, and none of it's a complaint, but it's like, how do you take care of yourself and, and these new surroundings? Because you were living in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. You moved to the shoot. Do you still live in New York or did you? Yeah, I go back, but like in Altered Carbon, I was pretty much in Vancouver for six months. Yeah. yeah you don't even think about that part of it, actually. Yeah. Like or you're like really outside of your element. Right. And I was able, you know, sometimes they have you in a hotel room and then that's a, it's like you're in space <laughs> and you're like, what do I, you know, how do I do my thing in this? Yeah. yeah you're like, do I unpack and put stuff in the drawer? Yeah. Like, that feels All weird. These, yeah. So. That is layered. That's a lot to think of. And then Russell. Hello. Hi. I have a question about power for you. Sure. Um, so your character, Angela, is killed off, obviously. Do you, as a viewer, agree that it was Jamie's fault that Angela died? Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't have the same relationship to the questions of, like, what should or shouldn't have happened, who whose fault it is. Um, I sort of, I think, uh, is it, his, I don't, I think fault is a, it, that's a, it's a, I feel like in our culture we have we have two modes. We either blame ourselves or we find fault outside of it. Uh, and so depending upon how some people tend to blame outside, some people tend to turn themselves at blame inside. And I think that in power, what happened was an inevitability. When you look at all of the characters, what they were striving for, uh, but what they were unwilling to let go. There's this great um, anecdote about like, in order to enter, you have to put things down in order to walk through the door. Uh, and neither Ghost nor Angela were willing to lay certain things down and there's a consequence for that. That was a really diplomatic answer. Cause I was like, yes, it was Jamie's fault. That's how I feel. Oh. But you now you're making yeah, me. Yeah, but that robs Angela of her own autonomy and her own responsibility, and she's a grown woman. She made some choices, you know. She, she made a lot <laughs> of choices. <laughs> she made some choices, and she eventually had to deal with them. But he was, I mean, just an amazing anti-hero. I'll say, like, just he. Yeah. Well, yeah. and also when you're in it and you you're pulled by love, like I've also, you know, yeah, yeah. you kick a dead horse. Sometimes, yeah. We've all been there. Um, well, I'm happy that we could, you know, really unpack what happened with Angela because, you know, it was really hard. I love it. I love it that it's really affected people. Oh, it really did. I think especially with Angela because people had, like, up and down feelings about her as they should over, you know, all the stuff she had to go through. But yeah, she's a very divisive yeah, character. Yeah, at like, the end, I'm... everybody was, like, mourning her. And I was like, that's nice. Yeah, it was really sweet. She deserved that. <laughs> um, well, if you guys miss seeing Leela on screen, you can check out Altered Carbon. You guys it, are going to love it. It it's is honestly, I mean, it's just the cyberpunk dystopian, the wardrobe, the styling, and, I, again, those themes of consciousness and living forever, I think, are just always fun to explore. Yeah. Yeah, so make sure you guys check it out. It hits now. Netflix on February 27th and put your hands together for Lila Lauren. Thanks so much. Thank you.